This is me, this is my channel, this is my lockdown haircut, and this is cinematic video on the iPhone SE. Okay, here we are inside Final Cut Pro, and the plugin I'm going to be using today to manipulate this footage is called M Film Look, and essentially it does exactly what it says on the tin. It makes your footage look more like film. Now there are two basic ways you can go when you're using M Film Look. You can use one of the baked in looks. Let me just hover over those for a second. Monochrome. This one's called Al Gore. This one's called Aurora and as you can see it has lots of stuff baked in like uh, on-screen flare, image blur, color correction, lots and lots of good stuff that you can add or subtract as you go along and if you're in a hurry you can just slap one of these onto your footage and manipulate it as you go but what I'm going to be doing today and I think it's the best way to use this particular plugin is to create my own look by dragging and dropping on this basic layer and there we go straight away we're now inside M film look and you have two menus you can use we have the normal standard menu over on this side which is absolutely fine and an easy menu to use but even easier and uh, good for today just for an introduction to M film look and the way I manipulate my iPhone footage we have this on screen menu so the first thing I'm going to do is take a white balance by going onto a white part of the image and clicking and straight away we can see that it's starting to warm up already and looking a bit more like the hazy summer day that it was next I'm going to go to levels and all I'm going to touch here is black and I'm going to move that about five ten percent to the right and already this image is looking a lot better we have a lot more contrast a lot more definition in the blacks and it's already looking pretty good I'm not going to touch gamma and I'm not going to touch white because I just tend to find with um, footage straight out of the iPhone it doesn't make a lot of difference and in fact it makes the image look a lot worse let me just show you a quick example of that just by touching the whites for a second they tend to get blown out really quickly and everything looks like a 1980s pop video so I'm gonna leave that alone and I'm gonna leave gamma alone the next thing I'm gonna do is go to basic adjustments and here the most important slider that I use is uh, color temperature and I'm just gonna move that ever so slightly over to the right to make the image look even more warm and even more hazy I'm not gonna to touch saturation because I am quite happy with the colors that come out of the iPhone SE so I'm gonna leave that exactly where it is next I'm gonna turn on aberration also known as chromatic aberration and if we look just around the edges of the image we see a little bit of distortion and uh, little tinges of red blue and green around the edges of objects and basically what this does is mimic the look of old optics and I quite like it so I'm actually going to leave that again exactly where it is if you like what you see why bother to manipulate it so I'm just going to leave that where it is for now I'm not going to be using any type of distortion today um, you can use this setting to uh, make it look like old-fashioned wide-angle lenses or barrel lenses, fisheye lenses, pretty much anything you want. But it's just not right for what I'm going for today, just a nice panoramic view of the park. But what I am going to use is image blur. This is really great. It's one of my favorite tools. Uh, basically, you can blur out the image wherever you want on the screen simply by moving this around to wherever you want and if you look on the edges of the screen we can see it is quite blurred maybe too blurred so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down the intensity to around about 25 30 percent and that's what I actually do with a lot of the settings inside M Film Look because I tend to find they're normally set around the 50% mark and it's a little bit over the top for a naturalistic look which is what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, when it comes to aspect you can actually pretty much manipulate blur anywhere on the screen you want, do lots of crazy things, blur anything on the screen, any region you want and there's lots of advanced settings for that which I haven't quite got into yet. But today all we're doing is just adding a little bit of blur just on the edges of the image and I think that's quite nice for drawing your attention towards the center of the image so I'm going to leave that now exactly where it is the next thing I'm going to add 
is some film grain. Uh, I'm not going to touch the size, I'm not going to touch the colour noise because again they don't tend to make too much difference I find on the iPhone SE footage but what I am going to do is slightly lower again the intensity to around about 25-30% and this image now I think is looking pretty good and it just needs two last touches. The first one is vignette. As you can see this one's a bit strong so again I'm going to take it down to around the 25% mark just to very gently in combination with the image blur and the aberration just draw your attention towards the center of the frame and then finally I'm going to add my cinematic letterbox and within this particular setting uh, the default setting seems to be 235.1 but of course you can change the aspect ratio to pretty much whatever you want inside M Film Look and play around with it and that's actually it for today that's how I've achieved a cinematic look so if we just turn off our on-screen controls and we go to toggling on and off our effects we can see what things look like before and after. Pretty dramatic isn't it? Pretty dramatic. I like that a lot so I'm going to leave that where it is now. I'm not going to manipulate it any further because I think we've achieved our goal for today. So is the iPhone SE going to become my new A camera replacing my Panasonic GH5? Well no but what I think it is really great for is grabbing three or four seconds of b-roll on the go especially for establishing shots like these. The 4K image directly out of the iPhone is way too sharp, enhancing the video look. But to deal with this, you can either manipulate it with a plugin of your choice in post, or if you're only uploading to YouTube like me, I think enough of the sharpness is lost in that process. That's it for this week, guys. I hope you've really enjoyed this tutorial and finding out how I manipulate the footage on my phone to make it match up with my other footage. And I'll see you very soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.